Welcome back everyone. Well, we're enjoying some lovely fall weather. I mean, not great climate change wise, but we've been having weather that's been unseasonably warm. And uh, we've had a little bit of rain too, which made a wonderful year for mushroom foraging. Well, today's topic is all about mushroom foraging and the use of AI. Do you use it to identify mushrooms and plants around your yard? Yeah, here we are, November the 9th, and we've got some beautiful dryad saddle. This is an edible mushroom. This is one of the latest fresh specimens I've seen uh, ever. We also have some garlic mustard, uh, which is a plant that you can use, um, make a pesto or in your salads, tastes garlicky. It's already sprouting up again. So you know, when I do an online search uh, for the sort of the trending topics and see what's hot topics on the internet, AI comes up more often than not, or artificial intelligence. Um, it's just really um, spreading throughout everything we do in our everyday lives. Even the phone that I'm recording, uh, this video one has AI capabilities. Um, some people use AI now to write their essays or I've even heard someone who's had them help them write their funeral um, eulogy and stuff like that. So uh, it's pretty amazing actually uh, what AI can do. And it's not just limited to things like that, like helping with your homework and whatnot. A lot of people have been using AI for some time now uh, to help identify mushrooms and plants in the field. Uh, and more often than not, people are actually using them to determine if these things are edible. So you'll see these really interesting apps online um, from all over the world basically that uh, claim to identify mushrooms and plants and uh, sometimes can tell you some pretty interesting facts about them and stuff like that. Um, so there are a few out there that are more well known. Um, some of the ones I admittedly have on my phone, um, well actually there's just one and it's called Picture This. I quite often use it uh, in my garden to look for garden pests and things like that. But uh, there's lots of them out there and uh, you know we need to know what the dangers are of using these things. Some wild parsnip hit with the sun there. Look at all the seeds on there. Don't like seeing this around. Uh, it can definitely cause severe skin irritation when you're exposed to sunlight and the sap of this plant. It tends to invade. So a lot of these apps uh, you know, are trained on data sets and the data sets can be regional, they can be sort of global, and uh, you don't know the quality of the data uh, that the apps are getting their information from. And think about this, the people that make these apps, um, they don't necessarily have to you know, validate this data to make sure that it's actually correct. Uh, and sometimes they're false advertising that this, uh, you know, oh, it's super accurate, X, Y, Z accuracy. Uh, there could be no mistakes made. This is, you know, the be all and the end all uh, that you'll basically ever need to identify things. So a lot of times they overinflate the accuracy of these things, thus giving you, you as a consumer buying these apps uh, a false sense of security. And some of these apps have regional bias. So you may use a app in Japan and uh, maybe your data set's coming from North America. And so you certainly see some, um, you know, mushrooms on the ground. You try to identify them with your app and lo and behold, uh, you know, they say, oh, they're edible, but they're really, uh, it's using North American data set, for example, and it's not uh, considering some species that you would find, for example, in Japan. So this could be uh, a danger for those that travel to do their mushroom forays. There was also an explosion recently of, um, books that were generated by AI that were mushroom and plant identification books and uh, they're bogus. Uh, they were, you know, imaginary authors, um, you know, they were just making up things, absolutely incorrect information there and they're being sold on Amazon and people thought they were real books that they could use to identify things. Yeah, I think it's really important that uh, retailers that sell uh, products where they're not sure of who the author is and these AI apps, uh, you have to declare that there is possibility that AI created uh, these resources to warn the public that there could be some misinformation contained in the product. Yeah, it takes a lot of skill to identify mushrooms. You need to know the anatomy of mushrooms and a lot about the seasons and just about the general environment. Trees where you can find them, can you find them on the ground, that kind of thing. So there's a lot more uh, details that you need to know for properly identifying things that, you know, these apps just can't, uh, they just don't cut it. Ooh, that sun is bright this morning. Um, another thing apps may not, you know, pick up on uh, are the different life stages of a plant, you know, when they're really young to when they're older. Or if a mushroom is in a button stage, for example, um, you know, they have, you know, like for example, an agaricus, like one of the, like a agaricus bisporus, that's a, an edible uh, mushroom that you would kind of have um, some one that you can kind of get from a store or that you can uh, forage in grasslands. Um, that one, the little button stage, you can mistake it for an amanita mushroom, you know, for the AI. Uh, app could say, oh, this is an edible mushroom, but it's actually, uh, it's actually not. It's actually a toxic amanita in the early phases. 
Um, and also they could misidentify like a small puffball mushroom like that as well. So that could be a very lethal mistake. So some of these apps were actually studied and uh, were found that they were not that accurate. Even the picture of this app that I have, uh, the accuracy was not that great. Let's take a look at what uh, the science says. Australian poison researchers uh, in 2022 looked at three apps in terms of um, mushroom identification and if they could tell you if they were poisonous. So they collaborated with uh, experts in the field um, to, that really knew what the mushrooms were and put them head to head with the AI. And here's what they found, um, that the, even the best performing app, which was uh, Picture Mushroom, um, accurate identifications from photos was only present in 49% uh, of the time and identified toxic mushrooms only 44% of the time. Um, mushroom identifier and iNaturalist, for example, offered accurate identifications in a third of the cases and uh, toxic mushrooms a third of the time and 40% of the time, uh, respectively. So that's kind of alarming. Um, the app that was most successful in identifying the death cap mushroom, one of the most poisonous mushrooms, um, the mushroom identifier performed the best at 67% compared to picture mushroom at 60% and iNaturalist at 27%. So that should really kind of concern you. And um, they did identify that regional bias um, did play a role, obviously, in some of the misidentification errors. Um, as it misidentified toxic Australian species uh, as similar looking edible North American species. So just what I was mentioning. You now what concerns me the most is, uh, you know, we see these things and they're being advertised as safe and they may not necessarily be so. I certainly would not use an app uh, for uh, identifying something that was edible. It may be a starting point, but you really should use uh, high quality materials like textbooks, go on forays, speak with experts. Um, there's also really good groups online if you're just interested in identifying, um, you know, mushrooms but not necessarily eating them, for example. Um, you know, there's a lot of community of experts out there to help you out. Um, but obviously, if you don't know what it is, not 100%, um, when in doubt, throw it out. I would never use apps for uh, wild edibles. I think it's dangerous. I think they're, um, people assume and they're advertised as being overly safe and I don't think they are. From those studies we can see, uh, they can make mistakes. Um, think over time, uh, the AI will get better um, and hopefully the models will have better data sets um, that we can use to train these models to, you know, to help us identify things a little bit more accuracy. Uh, but for now, I think we need to use caution. AI has tremendous potential um, for growth and it can be used a lot of a lot of positive ways on this planet. So think, I mean, we're just really in the explosive growth phase of the AI right now. So I'm really hoping in time that uh, we'll see a lot more exciting opportunities with it. Facts are that mushroom foraging is a high risk activity and you need to have real world skills uh, to identify mushrooms and plants uh, in the wild. So uh, let me show you some books that you can rely on um, to help you out with identification. Now, it's always part of the identification, not the full, um, the full answer, because sometimes, uh, you know, like I said, there's different species and different, um, you know, mushrooms uh, in different regions. But this, I'll show you some stuff for the North American region that I use. Okay, here are some of the books that I have. You can pause and take some screenshots. Again, these are very particular um, for my area of the world. I also have a few at the cabin as well that are uh, reputable books. Also, other things you can do is to go on forays with local experts or with uh, local mushroom groups to learn more about identifying mushrooms. Do you guys use AI in your everyday life? Let me know down below in the comments. Have a good week. See you next time.